Hello everyone, this is Oliver from My Brain Hurts, and welcome to the second episode of Pokemon Showdown. June isn't with me today, so that means I was going alone in this, but, um, anyway, the X and Y UU tier has recently popped up, and a lot of people have had great battles recently, including myself. Let's, let's go ahead and look at this team preview here. So, looking at this team preview, we've a bunch of very powerful Pokemon like Hydreigon, Absol, the Office of Defense, even Magnezone, have all been unbanned and demoted down to the underused tier. Um, I disagree with this, I hope they ban a lot of these Pokemon soon, but it's, it's still in beta, I can't really do anything right now, but let's go ahead and analyze the team here. I, on my side, I've got a pretty defensive team going on, I've got Porygon 2, the bulkiest wall ever in, that's not Ubers, um, I've also got Deoxys Defense with Stealth Rocks, um, Zapdos is specially defensive, Vaporeon is physically defensive. Scolipede has got the spikes and the speed boost, so Scolipede can speed boost to any Pokemon on my team for the home advantage. On the enemy side, he's got he also has a pretty defensive team, except for the um, offensive duo of Heliolisk and Absol. Those two will do major damage in this battle, and, and you will see that soon. Magnezone Mag can't really do anything to my team since I don't have any steel types to tr uh, for him to trap. So th the Magnezone is isn't really good for much. The Quagsire is just a general wall. I don't have any grass moves, but Hydreigon can easily KO it with a Draco Meteor. And the uh, unaware ability actually goes against him because he will ignore my minus two from the Draco Meteor. The Amnipalm is super fast. It can... Uh, I think it pretty much out outspeeds anyone except for plus one Scolipede. Um, Snorlax is going to be a big pain in the ass because it's got that huge special defense and most of the Pokemon on my team are specially orientated. But let's go and the Absol will do extreme damage because of the, it, I, I can clearly see that it is the mega version of it because it doesn't seem to fit on any um, other purpose besides that. So... With that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into the battle. So I lead with the Scolipede, and he leads with the Ambipalm. I protect on the first turn because I'm predicting the Fake Out. He does go for the Fake Out, so I go for the Spikes on the second turn. He, d he has the Acrobatics, which surprises me, because I don't see Ambipalm with Acrobatics lately. But I do go for the Protect on the third turn. He goes for the Acrobatics again, and I do the Baton Pass to my Porygon 2, who takes the following double hit. Like a champion, only takes uh, about seventeen percent. Uh, um, I thought he was gonna go for the double hit again, so I use recover. But I do d use the toxic on the Snorlax as he uses curse. Um, you don't see really see curse lax anymore because of the giant power creep of black and white. But it kind of it really works against my team because um, none of the Pokemon really have a fighting move except for Hydreigon. So I go into Vaporeon to take the Body Slam, but he gets paralyzed and I'm not able to roar him out. So I just uh, decide to change tactics and switch into my Deoxys Defense to knock off his leftovers so that he cannot um, recover as efficiently. He, he decides to use Rest, which is a smart move to get rid of the Toxic. So I go ahead and set up the Stealth Rocks because he's asleep, and I switch back out into Vaporeon so I can roar him away from the battlefield. So he uses Curse again. Which is good because that means Rallus can't take any more damage, and I roar him out into the Quagsire. So I go into Porygon 2, so I can, intending to Toxic this thing, which I do land, but he uses Toxic on me as well, and that's going to be pretty important because that pretty much uh, limits Porygon 2's staying power. So I go for the Tri Attack on the Switch, I hit the Snorlax for a bit of damage, and I go back into Vaporeon knowing he's going to use Curse again. So I intend to roar him out, which luckily I break through paralysis, and I do roar him out, and I roar him out into the Magnezone. Now, knowing this Magnezone is going to go for the electric move, I send out Leo, my Zapdos, but he goes for the charge beam, which uh, surprised me as well. But uh, his hidden power does 42%, I was expecting it to, to do a lot more at plus one, but this Zapdos is especially uh, defensive with full investment in special defense and a call nature. So I go for the Heat Wave, and luckily I burn that, and that's going to be pretty important because the passive damage will take out that Magnezone Zone without me even having to use Heat Wave again. I can just continually go for the Roost and get back to 91% health, killing off that Magnezone. Zone. That's the first down of the game. He sends in Ambipalm, he goes for the Fake Out, it does a hefty chunk of damage to Leo. So I'm thinking he can live another double hit, and he does at 2%, I go for the Roost. And I don't think I'm not you know, going to risk any critical hits, so I go into Porygon 2 
to take the double hit again. And after toxic damage, it does live another double hit at 1% health. So that is going to be a double down. He sends out his heal list. Now this is where he sort of turns the battle around because I go for the protect thinking I can just baton task to Hydreigon to take the Thunderbolt. But it does turn out that it is Choice Scarf. So knowing that, I go into Leo, go for the Roost because I know he's going to switch out. He goes into Snorlax and I decided to go into Hydreigon to go for the superpower, but he uses rest on the switch and I just go ahead and go for the superpower again. I hit the Quagsire, which is good. And um, here's where I thought I would be screwed over because I missed my Draco Meteor and he hits a Toxic on me. But it turns out in the end it didn't really matter that much because Hydreigon's going to be switching in and out a lot. So um, the Toxic didn't really affect the battle at all. Here comes the Absol. This is where I was kind of scared because he does go for the Mega Evolve right away. A critical hit player of does about 40% and he's going to kill Zorgon off with a Night Slash. I didn't... It didn't really matter much to me because he wasn't as much use in the battle. He goes for the Night Slash on the Zapdos, which only does about 40%. And I just decided to go for the Discharge because for more damage. And I do take out the Mega Absol with only a slight hitch. So he sends out the Heelus again, goes for the Hidden Power, and it only does 25%. So I decided to go for the Roost. And I Roost uh, once more because um, I didn't want to risk a critical hit at this point. So I misclick here and go for the Discharge when I wanted to go for the Heat Wave, but it didn't really matter much because Leo can't do anything to that Snorlax really, because I'm just going to switch out this turn. So he sends out his, uh, his Snorlax, I go into Hydreigon to go for the Super Power, and that is going to be the game. So I hope you enjoyed this X and Y UU battle, I'll be back with more soon, so peace out.